Hi, Jen. Do you think you can use your computer to pick out some wood duck calls for me? Of course. Scanning sound wish now. According to this, there are two wood ducks calling 100 meters to your right. Great. Thanks, Jen. Okay. Wood ducks, here I come. Wow! It's a wood duck chick. Oh, it seems to be stuck up a tree just like the ones at Safari World. There's Mum calling for her chick. Right, I need to get up there and find out what's going on. Oh, there's Dad. Don't mind me. doing up here? Huh? Wait a minute. Uh, Eggshells? Of course! The ducklings aren't stuck up in the tree. This is their nest. Oh. oh. I'll pop that back. lay her eggs in there, and then the chicks hatch out. In a forest full of alligators and snakes, this is the perfect place to keep your little ones safe. But this little one and his brothers and sisters are big enough to leave the nest now. Oh, there's Mum waiting. But how are they going to get down? Oh, careful, buddy. You're a bit close to the edge. It's a long way. Down. He made it! The ducklings are so light that falling all that way doesn't even hurt them. The rest of the ducklings don't look too sure, though. Maybe they need some encouragement. Come on, you lot. Follow me. Okay, buddy, it's your turn. Ready, steady, go! Yes! I hope this works. To the size of... To the size of a flamingo. Ah, that's better. Time to get wet. Ooh. Ah, oh, there's plenty of flamingos here. And it's not too deep either, which makes it the perfect place for me to do my painting. Easel. Canvas. Paintbrush and palette. And paint. Pink. So that's where it got to. Ready. It... Oh, um, excuse me. Would you mind standing still for a second? They're performing a courtship dance. This is how flamingos find their perfect partner. Dances like these can go on all day long, so I'm just going to have to try and paint them as they pass. Finished. Hopefully Mr. Hammond won't notice the difference. Right, I'll let this lot finish their dance while I pack this away. Okay, now I need to get back to Safari World. Jen. Hi, Andy. Have you finished the painting? Yep, all done. Great. I'll send the Safari Mobile to pick you up. Thanks, Jen. I need to get back to normal size.
There are some seabirds over there. If I shrink down, maybe one of them will fly me across to the other island. Engage shrink mode. Oh, I don't think these birds are going to be able to give me a lift. They're flightless cormorants. The only species of cormorant that can't fly. And they're one of the seabirds that are only found here in the Galapagos. Flightless cormorants adapted to a life swimming in the sea. But now their wings are too small to get airborne. Look, they even use seaweed to build their nests. They may seem slow and clumsy on land, but in the water, they're... The water, of course. Time for a dip. A flightless cormorant may not be able to fly me to the next island, but this one has kindly agreed to swim me there. They're superb swimmers. They use their powerful hind legs to propel themselves through the water. Zipping around on the hunt for fish and octopus. Oh. Looks like this is my stop. Thanks for the lift. Yes, I've made it to the waved albatross colony. Oh, look at those two. How sweet. Right. Now, the book must be around here somewhere. Hang on a minute. What's that? I recognise that sound. That's the noise in Mr Hammond's office. And it's coming from over there. Oh, so that's what the sound is. Albatross knocking their beaks together. Oh, I'd never have guessed that. According to my gizmo, it's part of an elaborate courtship dance. Man and female waved albatrosses pair up for life. The female lays a single egg each year, and then both parents look after it for two months until it hatches. Oh. Wow, this place is amazing. No wonder Jem wanted to come bird spotting in the Galapagos. Yes, there are thousands of seabirds here, including storm petrels. Hmm. Can't see where a storm petrel could safely nest, though. All I can see is rock, rock, and more rock. Do you ever get the feeling you're being watched? It's a short-eared owl. They like to eat storm petrels. And it's definitely got its eye on something. Uh-oh. It's me. Time to get out of here. Run! <laughs> I need to hide! Oh, I should be safe in here. The owl is too large to fit in this tunnel. Oh, 
Oh. Huh? What's this? It's an egg, if I'm not mistaken. Yes! It's a storm petrol egg. <laughs> and look, here comes the mum. Hello! <laughs> so this is where they lay their eggs. In tunnels in the rock. And that's why Mr Hammond couldn't find the nest. Hi, Jen. I found out where the storm petrels here on Galapagos are nesting. In underground tunnels in the rock. Look! Wow! It's the perfect place for them to keep their eggs safe. Away from the wind and from predators too. That's fantastic, Andy. Do you want me to let Mr Hammond know? Yes, please. And I've used the Safari Mobile solar panels to recharge its batteries. I'm sending it to your location now. Brilliant. Thanks, Jen. You're a star. Oh, no. That owl is still hanging around outside. How am I going to get out? Um... Wait a minute. The storm petrol came from that direction. Maybe there's another way out. Thanks for showing me where you lay your egg. See you later. Yes, I found a back door and the owl hasn't noticed, which means Mum can still get in and out safely to look after her egg. And I can get back to normal size. See you later, Shorty and Al. It's a lot colder up in the mountains. But the river here is packed full of salmon, which means... Yes! Oh, Mr Hammond wasn't kidding. There are hundreds of bald eagles here. Now, if I'm going to get close without scaring them, I need to be smaller. Engage shrink mode. Great. Let's go. Hello. This is a young bald eagle. They have these dark feathers until they're five years old. Oh, I think she's got a eye on the salmon. Fish are the main part of a bald eagle's diet. They use those giant talons to grab them from the water. Oh! Oh, she's got one! Well done! Uh-oh. Watch out! Hey, you big bunny! Why don't you catch your own dinner? Don't worry, my feathered friend. Let's see if we can sneak over and get you a piece of that salmon. Shh, quietly does it. Shh. Almost there. Wait, it's another adult eagle. See? I told you they can be aggressive, especially when it comes to food. Now's your chance, my friend. Slip in there while they're not looking. Yes! <laughs> That'll teach you not to steal somebody else's dinner. Well done, my friend. Look! In all that squabbling, one of the eagles has lost a feather. Quick! Back to normal size. Great! 
Let's go. This will be perfect for Mr. Hammond's collection. Thanks for the love! These are large predatory fish called trevally. It says here that they usually eat squid, crabs and other fish. I don't want to add myself to that list. I'd better get back to normal size. I'll be safe now, but I'm not sure about the young terns. It looks like these Trevally have learned to leap out of the water to try and catch them whilst they're learning to fly. Maybe that's what happened to Jen's camera. It flew too close to the water and a Trevally grabbed it. it. Must be on the surface. Come on. Now, where's that camera? Oh no, it's my young friend. He's landed in the water. If he doesn't get airborne again soon, he's gonna end up as fish food. I need to warn him. Oh, there's no time to rest. You need to fly. Remember, like this. Go on, you can do it. now. He and the other young turns will be safe way up there. Right, where did that bird cam get to? Ah, there it is. I better go and grab it before a Trevally does. Got it. I better call Jen. Jen, I found your bird cam. You'll never guess what happened to it. It was knocked out of the sky by a leaping fish called a trevally, who mistook it for a real sooty turn. Wow, I never knew a fish could do that. Neither did I. Right, I'm relaunching it for you now. You should be getting a signal any moment, Jen. Thanks, Sandy. If I fly it a bit higher than before, then hopefully it'll be safe from any more acrobatic fish. Good idea. And just in time. Mr. Hammond's talk is about to begin. I'll start the live stream straight away. And I'd better head back to the safari, sir. See you later, my feathered friends. Remember to fly high. Excuse me. Have any of you seen some baby alligators around here? I guess not. Hmm. I wonder where they're off to. Thousands of pelicans on that island. Maybe there are some baby alligators too. Right, time to land. Um, well, I don't want to startle anyone. I know. Engaging shrink mode. to find and record. I think I'll head out onto the Mississippi. All I need is my inflatable dinghy. Come on. But I can't see any alligators around here. Whoa, 
Whoa! What's going on? I'm speeding up. Oh, it's getting a bit choppy. Hold on! Oh, oh, oh. Lots of fish, too! <laughs> this is turning into a feeding frenzy, and I'm stuck in the middle! <laughs> Help! Let me out! The pelican's large throat pouches and pointy beaks are perfect for snapping up fish. I just hope that one doesn't poke a hole in my... <laughs> That's one way of getting down the Mississippi. Oh. Hello, Andy. I fixed Mr. Hammer's cassette player and put a blank tape in it. I'll take it back to the jungle den for you. Thanks, Jen. You truly are. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, is, is everything OK? Uh, I'm fine, thanks, Jen. But it looks like I'm going to need my puncher repair kit. Let's all go on Andy's Aquatic Adventure.